Hi there, I'm Mary Sarah Burke. I'm a small animal surgeon at Edinger Surgical Options in Madison, Wisconsin. I've been part of the team here since January of 2018, and it's been a really rewarding experience. I'm a board certified small animal surgeon, as well as board certified specialist in canine sports medicine and rehabilitation. Today I'm gonna to be talking about elbow dysplasia. Elbow dysplasia is a disease that affects young, rapidly growing dogs, it's a front leg problem affecting the elbow joints themselves. Okay? Signs of elbow dysplasia include lameness or limping, which you might notice in the morning or after exercise. You may notice difficulty going downstairs, jumping off the couch, jumping off the bed, anything that's gonna put more weight or wear and tear on the front legs. You may also notice pain or swelling around those elbow joints or may notice reluctance or pain to flex the elbow. Say, for example, you're lifting the leg to clean the foot after your dog comes in from outside, or doing something as simple as teaching him how to shake, where he has to actually bend that elbow to lift his paw off the ground. The elbow joint in dogs is very similar to the elbow joint in humans, and it comprises of the three same bones. We have this humerus, or the upper arm bone, the radius bone, which is the front bone or the major weight-bearing bone of the forelimbs, and the ulna bone, which sits towards the back of the elbow joint. We can have disease in any one of these bones that can contribute to elbow dysplasia. Elbow dysplasia is a bit of an umbrella term that can really consist of a number of different diseases within the elbow joint. The first one is called ununited ankyneal process, or UAP. This occurs within the ulna bone near the top of the joint. The ankyneal process normally fuses to the rest of the ulna bone by about 20 weeks of age, or five months. If it doesn't fuse by then, it is abnormal and it's considered a disease. That bone is very unlikely to ever fuse on its own, and that piece of bone will then rattle around the joint and cause pain and lameness. The second form of elbow dysplasia is called fragmented medial coronoid process, or FMCP. Now this is also within the ulna bone, but a little bit lower within the joint itself. And with this condition, we can have disease within the cartilage or the underlying bone, or both, that can cause pain and lameness. And in some cases, that cartilage and bone fragment can actually become loose and again rattle around in the joint and cause pain and lameness. The third form of elbow dysplasia is called OCD, or osteochondritis desiccans and this form occurs within the humerus bone. And in this condition, during development, the cartilage fails to turn to bone on the joint surface. And so we can tend to get a really thick cartilage flap and a defect in the bone. And as you might imagine, that defect in the underlying bone results in an irregular joint surface and cause pain and lameness from the poor contact between the bone and the cartilage. The fourth form of elbow dysplasia is called elbow incongruity. And what this means is that the three bones of the elbow don't fit together normally. So one bone could be shorter or longer than another bone, or they can be formed abnormally to cause a poor fit. And when they don't fit well, they don't move well, and it causes pain and lameness within the joint. Sometimes we can see just one of these forms of elbow dysplasia in any given dog. Sometimes we can see more than one form within a dog. And interestingly, very commonly, elbow dysplasia is bilateral, so we can see it in both the right and left elbow. In summary, elbow dysplasia is a disease that affects young, rapidly growing dogs. Often we see the first signs of lameness between five and seven months of age, but certainly we can see them earlier than that, or even later once more advanced arthritis develops. If you think your dog has elbow dysplasia, the best thing to do is have your veterinarian examine your pet and see if there is elbow pain going on. He or she may then recommend getting some x-rays of the elbows or may recommend additional diagnostics like a CT scan or even elbow arthroscopy. In our next episode, we'll talk more about treatment of elbow dysplasia and what that might mean for your pet. Thanks for listening today and I hope to see you again soon. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. To find out more about our clinic and the services we offer, check out our website at www.edingersurgicaloptions.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.